In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to cut a rhinestone template from scratch um, using the Caesar Romeo okay and I'm also going to be showing you in the Leonardo design studio as well so we're gonna be doing that today um, and this is the shirt we're going to make I did get this template from it from Etsy I will try to remember to link the description box down below all materials will be linked down below as well um, so if you have any questions about the rhinestones I'm gonna get into that but Everything will also be in the description box. But yes, today we are using the Romeo to go ahead and cut some rhinestone block. You guys, it turned out beautiful as far as like peeling my template from the mat and all the holes being cut out completely. It was perfect. Okay, I got the perfect cut. Um, but yeah, we're going over settings, the Leonardo Design Studio, the... Um, how to load it and all of those things in the Caesar Romeo. So go ahead and stick around for that. All right, guys. So we are starting off in the Leonardo Design Studio, which is the software for the Caesar Romeo. Um, it is very similar. Well, it's kind of similar to Cricut and Silhouette Studio. It's kind of like a mix between the two, honestly. Um, but I'm going to be using a cutting mat, um, a 12 by 24 cutting mat. If you have to change the size of your artboard, you would just come over here where it says artboard, artboard click down arrow. And then you can change your mat size here or if you want to do a material roll and not use a mat you would select that here as well okay so i do already have my 12 by 24 mat selected which is what i'm going to be using so i'm going to go ahead and import my file so i'm just going to go up to file i'm going to go to import file and then i'm going to select my rhinestone file which is this here now i am going to be cutting this and it's a cut only so i'm going to select cut only and here is my file and then I'm gonna select next. Now there is, um, the this is the layers panel. So currently there is two layers, the pink and the red one. That's fine, I don't wanna change that. So I'm gonna select apply. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click this and ungroup it because this part here is for HTV. I'm not gonna be using that right now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that. Now I'm going to select both and I just want to double check the width and the height to make sure that it imported the correct size, which it did. This is the size. I did purchase this image from Etsy. I'll try to remember to leave a link to the shop down below, but this is the size that the seller said that this file needed to be in order for the um, SS10 rhinestones to brush in correctly. So I'm not going to change the size of that at all whatsoever, but I do want to separate the two files. So this is going to be the outline, which is going to be one color. And then this is going to be the inside of the letters, which I'm actually going to do each letter in a different color. So in total, I'm going to have five colors on this file. Okay. But I wanted to separate that because I want the outline and I want the inside to cut separate from each other. Okay. So um, this is how I want it to line up on my mat. That looks fine. I'm gonna go over to send design. And then I want to make sure that all artwork that fits on the page is selected so that both of these get um, cut correctly. And then decide how you wanna position the artwork. Um, I'm gonna go to use current mat page location because I want it to cut just like this. Okay, and then I'm going to go to send. So now we have our two images here. Now, what I want to try to do is I want to see, can I move this to, it doesn't look like I can. Like on the, or maybe, I don't know, maybe it'll cut all at one time. I'm not for sure, but um. Or maybe if I change the color. So let me go back. And I'm going to change the color of this to the same. I'm going to change both of these to the same color. 
so that they cut on the same mat. I don't want them to be on separate mats. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and send design, send, perfect. Now it's all on one mat, that's what I wanted. Okay, so all you have to do, you can't, I was trying to figure out how I could drag, like how um, on Cricut Design Space, you can move the ob object to another mat. Um, it didn't seem to have that option here. So I just went ahead back to my design board and I changed the color of both files to the same color so that they'll go ahead and cut on the same mat. Okay. And then again, I wanna make sure that the 12 by 24 is selected. I am using the standard blade. And then because there's no setting here for a uh, flock, I'm gonna go ahead and go to use cutter settings and we're not gonna mirror or anything like that because this is going to be, we're cutting this in the rhinestone flock. So there's no mirror for that, okay? So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to um, get this loaded. I am going to show you on the camera how to load it, cut it, and all of that. We're going to do a, a couple test cuts because I do want to make sure that I have the correct settings so that all of my dots cut out flawlessly for me. Um, so we're going to do a, a couple of test cuts, figure out how we can get it to cut without having to like pick the little flock dots out or anything like that. So I'm going to get my machine set up. And we are going to go ahead and get this flock cut out. All right, so I'm back here and I do have my flock prepped. So I'm cutting my flock on a green standard grip uh, Cricut mat and I'm cutting it without a back. So the flock is, the sticky part is touching the sticky part of the mat. Hopefully that will help all of my holes to be able to, you know, come off. Like when I go to peel off my um flock it just all peels and the whole stay that's what i'm hoping okay so what i'm gonna do is go ahead and do my my cut settings here because there's no like there's no flock setting what i'm gonna do is basically i'm gonna have to go um and make one so let me see if i can bring you guys in so you can see here on my little screen let me hold on okay turn my ring light away so you can see so this is what the screen looks like okay and then i'm gonna go to the cut settings and then here you have your material and right now it's on easy weed. Um, so we have, you know, easy weed, brick 600, holographic, blackboard, glitter, metal. Um, we have some PSB. And then we have other. It does have strip flock on here. Um, let me select that and go back. No, I don't think that force is going to be high enough on that strip, on that. I'm sorry, I didn't even do it. So strip flock, load. Okay, so they have it on cut speed 10, force 15. I don't think that's gonna be high enough, um, but I guess we can try it with a test cut. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and load this in from the back. And I just want to make sure that my mat lines up. Okay. I want to make sure that this part, when you're loading it, you want to make sure your, your mat lines up with the arrows. Sorry if my camera is not focusing, but you want to make sure your mat lines up with this gray part here with the arrows, which it does. And then my blade. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is push the test cut button. Let me grab my, oh, my weeding tool here so we can see how it cut or if it cut.
Okay, so that doesn't look like it cut at all. So that force is not gonna be high enough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna cut the speed up to 13. And I'm gonna turn the force. The first time I did my file, I think I did it on 40. I'm gonna try 45. We're gonna see what happens. And I'm just gonna move my blade back and push test cut again. Okay. Now let's see what we have here. Again, I want it to be able to peel easily. And it halfway did. It doesn't look like it cut this box all the way. So, that means I got to turn the force up a little bit more. It was on 45. I'm going to go 55. And I'm going to push test cut. And now I'm going to pull this back. What I'm looking for, there's like, it looks like a little t-shirt with a box around it. Okay. So I don't know if you guys can see. This is the first cut. My box didn't come off. It's still, my box is right here actually. Okay. So you see how it didn't come off when I peeled it back. When I peeled this one back, the box stayed there. Okay. That lets me know that I think this one is good. And then there's the circle that was in the middle. And I'm sorry, I'm doing this one handed. There's the t-shirt. Okay, so I do think I like how that one cut better. So what I'm going to do now is just to be on the safe side, I'm going to put the force up just a little bit more. I'm going to put it on 60. So that was 55. Excuse me. I'm going to put it on 460 cut speed 13. I should probably write that down. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is line up my blade on the outside of where my um, test cut was and then I'm going to come over here to my computer and push send to cutter all right and now it's cutting um I'm going to let you listen to it for a second just so you can see it's not it's not super loud at all I'm also going to time this so and see how long it takes to cut at max cut speed of 13. Um, so it's 210 now that I'm recording. We're going to see how long this takes. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and let this file cut and I will come back when it's all done. Okay, so remember when I said that I was starting this at 210? Okay, let me show you my phone. Hopefully you can see it. I don't think you can. Hold on. Because I want to show you guys what time it is on my phone. It's 2.23. I started this at 2.10 and it is 2.23. So it has been 13 minutes and this file is done. Let's, ooh, let's see. Let's see. 13 minutes. That's crazy. Let me get, I need my uh, weird. Okay. So let's see. I'm hoping it's. 
cuts. All of the holes. Let's see. I'm just gently pulling it down. Hopefully I'm in the camera because I cannot see. Where do my holes start? My holes start, I think, down here. Oh, hold on. Can you guys see that? Let me... Let me zoom in. I'm slowly pulling, slowly pulling because I do not want to rip or stretch out any holes. But oh my gosh. Wow, I have never, ever had all my holes cut before. Wow. I'm still just slowly pulling because again, I don't want to rip. Wow, so that's the first one, which is the inside. I'm going to cut that. <clears throat> I'm going to cut this off so that I can go ahead and peel back the second part. But you guys, do you guys see that? I know I always have an issue like with my camera and my angles. All of the holes are cut. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut this so that I can peel it. Peel back the second part without, you know, like ripping my holes on, on this part. Just, it just makes it easier to um, cut my template. I'm sorry, get my template off the mat. Wow, that's the first half of the template, which is the inside part of the hole. So now I'm going to peel the outline. Oh no, I don't think my thing was over enough. Okay, so this one, I don't think cut right. I mean, like all the holes look like they cut, but it looks like it was too far over. I'm still gonna peel it so you guys can see though. Wow, look, all of the dots are coming off you know what I may just just cut out just this one heart I don't think I'm gonna cut out the whole template again I think I'm just gonna recut this one piece right here because it's just the heart Wow, all of the dots came off, every single one. <sighs> okay, so let me show you my heart. So right here on the edge, it got cut off a little bit. So, like as you can see on my mat, 
it was just a little too close to the edge so that part didn't get cut so what I'm gonna do is on my computer I'm going to just cut out this part on like I have some extra flock down here and I think this should be enough so what I'm gonna do is just cut out this heart right here okay so I'm gonna cut out my heart again and then I'm gonna come back and we'll brush in our stones and press it okay guys so I have all of my um, templates cut out what I like to do is I put my templates on the back of cardstock um, the reason that I do it that way is just because I thought that I was going to be into paper crafts. So I purchased a whole bunch of these little packets of, of cardstock and I ended up really hating paper crafts. So I do have a whole bunch of this cardstock and since I'm not using it, I was like, I might as well just use it for this. So basically what I do is, um, it's a cardstock pack, right? 12 by 12. Basically what I do is I tear out a sheet and I lay it down and then I take my template and I put it on the cardstock and then I cut it out and my scissors are over here. So once I put it on the cardstock, I just go ahead and trim the excess off. Um, I know there are some people who use the um, the Dollar Tree cutting mat or the cutting the plastic cutting boards. I think they're plastic. I'm not for sure. That's one way to do it. However, you know you want to do it. It's personal preference. And then there's my template. So it's still nice and firm so I can brush in my stones. Okay, so this is the template that had the messed up heart and I did have to recut this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this heart off of this template and try to put the other heart on there so I don't have to waste two pieces of cardstock. Okay, and then I'm just trimming my block around my template so that I can go ahead and get it on the cardstock. But like I said, I'm gonna try to get this piece and the heart on the same one. Which I should be able to. So there is the LVE. And then here's my hearts. Which my hearts cut out exactly the same. All of the holes came up just fine. Okay, and then there is my heart. Okay, so I'm actually not going to trim this piece of cardstock. I'm just going to leave it like this. Well, I'm going to trim some of it, but not right now. Okay, so there's the, um, the outline of the template. Okay, so now what we're going to do is go ahead and brush in our stones and I am using the baby's booty rhinestones. She, if you are watching this in January of 2023, then she has a buy-in that is starting the end of this month, I believe January 29th, but I will put the information in the description box. If I'm incorrect, whatever information is in the description box is the correct information, okay? But I do believe it's the 29th. So, with that being said, she does have some new colors coming out. This is one of them. I used it on a previous shirt I did on TikTok. It is the Violet Volcano. These ones are 
super, super pretty. When I use them, they gay. I use it with violet. Uh oh, you guys, I just spilled some. Oh my god. <laughs> um, it wasn't a whole lot, but these are the ones that um I used, and I used it with violet ice, and they gave off a really pretty purple. Um, some of them kind of give off a blue. It really just depends on, I guess, what you pair it with. When I used it with the volcano, I'm sorry, when I used it with the violet ice, they gave off this really, really pretty purple color. And I actually have the shirt. So, uh oh, knocked you guys over. Um, so I'm going to show you the shirt. This is, ooh, hoo, hoo, do you guys see that? This is the shirt. So right here in the middle is the Violet Volcano. And then this up here is the Violet Ice. And at the bottom is the Violet Ice. But wow, do y'all see that? You see how like in some parts it's giving pinky, purpley. Some parts it's giving purple. Like right here is purple. Some parts it's giving blue. It's just so pretty. Okay, so this is the Violet Volcano. Um, but the ones that I'm going to use now are going to be, this is an icicle. I believe this, I'm pronouncing it right. Okay. Um, this is kind of looking like an iridescent, um, it's kind of giving crystal a b but more like iridescent to me i was trying to i i should i should have looked at e's video to see how she described it but this is kind of how it looks i don't want to spill it um like i said it's kind of giving crystal a b with more i don't know glass looking iridescent looking hopefully I'm explaining that right the camera really doesn't do it justice <clears throat> but I'm going to use this for the outline and then like I said the inside colors I'm going to use four different colors which are going to be her opal colors okay so there is a green opal and it's kind of um, maybe pastel looking, but shiny, shiny pastel. I don't know. It's green opal. So I'm going to use green. There is blue opal. I really hope the camera's picking this up. I'm trying my best to show you guys without spilling it. This is um, pink opal. And the last one is white. White opal. And these are the four colors I'm going to use for the inside of the letters okay so I'm just gonna go ahead and brush these in I am gonna speed it up and kind of do a voiceover for the brush in process just because it can, it can get kind of lengthy but I'm gonna go ahead like I said speed this up and we're gonna brush these in all right guys so what we're doing now is we're just gonna go ahead and brush the stones into the outline um, and how I do it is I just pour my stones all over and then I brush in a circular motion Brushing in a circular motion really gets the rhinestones to go into the holes um, the right way facing up the way that they should be. Um, and then I am using, I think it's either called a trim brush or an edge brush. I can't remember, but the link for it will be in the description box. You can get them off of Amazon. Um, again, I will have everything linked in the description box for you to check out. So definitely um, look there for the list of materials. But yeah, we're just brushing and as you're brushing, if you push them off to the side, um, at the same time as you're brushing, they just kind of go into the holes flawlessly.
All right, and now I'm going to brush in the colors. And I'm starting with the green opal, and I'm just gonna go ahead and um, brush the green opal into the letter L. And then I'm gonna do the other four letters in um, different colors as well. The heart is going to be the white opal. The V, I believe I did in the pink opal. And then the um, E is the blue opal. And as you can see, I'm just kind of brushing and pushing them out of my way at the same time so that I don't create like too much of a mess or, you know, anything like that. I know when, when some people are doing different colors on their template, they like to use cardstock or tape or, um, you know, different things to try to keep the rhinestones out of the other sections. Um, but for me, I'm kind of able to control my rhinestones pretty well. So I didn't, I don't necessarily, um, I didn't necessarily need to do that. But if you do, it's perfectly fine as well. And now I'm gonna move on to my next color, which is the pink. And again, I just pour a nice mound out onto the template and then I'm just gonna brush it in a circular motion. If you pour a lot of stones on, it's easier to get them brushed in versus if you just brush, like if you pour a little bit, it's harder to get them brushed in. I'm not sure why it's like that, but um, if you pour, the more stones you pour, the easier it is to get them brushed in. And then we're gonna go on to the last color, which is the white opal for the heart. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and take my tape and we're going to just go ahead in a U shape and place it from the center going out and then we're gonna press it down with our hands. If any moved out of the way, I kind of use my thumb to just go ahead and push them back into place before I lift my transfer tape up. And the transfer tape, again, will be linked in the description box and I'm just gonna go ahead and peel that up and then I'm gonna put the backing on it. Um, I did have one stone, I think it was on my B that kind of flipped over, so I had to fix that. Um, and I have all of my um, rhinestones picked up now. So what I did was, is I cut the heart of the, um, and the love, I cut the heart outline out. Um, just because, because it didn't cut the right way in the beginning, I did have to recut it. So it wasn't going to perfectly line up, which was fine. But I did need to cut away the outline of the heart in the outline of the other template just so that I would be able to get it to line up the way that the heart outline and the heart center needed to line up. Hopefully that made sense. But right now I'm just pressing the L, the V, the E outline. And then the next part is going to be the L, the V, the E center with the different colors. And then I'm gonna press the heart outline and then I'm gonna press the heart inside. So yeah, right now that's just the inside of the letters with the different colors, the green, the pink, and the, uh, the green, the pink, and the, um, the blue, and then the outline of the heart is what I'm pressing now. And I'm pressing at 325 degrees for 15 seconds. And then I use a shirt just to kind of make sure they're all nice and pressed down before I peel my transfer tape up. 
and that looks amazing and then I gotta add the center of the heart and then we'll be done with that All right guys, so I am all finished with the shirts and that looks absolutely amazing. So again, on the outline, I did the icicle color and then on the L, we have the green opal. On the heart, we have the white opal. On the V, we have the pink. And on the E, we have the blue. So I'm just gonna turn ring light down just a little bit just because I feel like it was a little too bright and you couldn't really see it all right but that looks absolutely amazing you guys again I will leave the link for um, Eve's buy-in for the month of January so please be advised if you're watching this video after January 29th of 2023 that the information I put in the drop box or in the description box may no longer be accurate um, but I will leave her website for you to check out any further information again if you are watching this after January 29th 2023 okay and when it comes to the Romeo, I absolutely, I'm still doing a lot of learning on it and cutting things and testing things out, but I definitely, definitely found my flock cut settings. Um, as you guys saw when I was peeling it back, it peeled absolutely flawlessly. I didn't have any issues with the flock dots, anything like that. It's definitely right now uh, my number one cutter, <laughs> my number one go-to cutter. Um, I still have a lot of playing to do with it and things like that, but again, we're learning together. So if you have any projects you would like me to try with the Caesar Romeo, please drop them down below. Um, but yeah, that's all I have for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all the good stuff. Until next time. Bye.